Okay. Um, sorry, I only get 10 minutes with these. So you gotta, you gotta work fast with me here. But, um, in the Birmingham protest, uh, we saw in the first or the second, uh, lecture note there, uh, Dr. King led to the most segregated city, the heart, the, the heart of hatred, uh, being Birmingham, Alabama. Um, Dr. King was arrested for leading that protest in your formative, which you'll look at later on today. I, I wrote, I put in a letter that Dr. King writes, uh, from the Birmingham jail that, uh, you'll be able to read and, uh, answer questions with, um, but the television, the television, we talked about the impact of the television on the 1960 election and being and being JFK. But these events that were taking place in Birmingham were shown on national television. Now, to the ordinary everyday audience, they saw what was going on, but they can do nothing. Um, the most important figure. And if you look right here, you see John Kennedy, you see Jacqueline Kennedy as we're looking at him to the right. But you see his vice president, Lyndon Johnson. Hang on to that name. It'll be very important here in a minute. They see on television the horrifics of what's going on. Uh, and later that night on national television, John Kennedy will call into the Birmingham jail and ask to speak with Dr. King. And he will promise to Dr. King that a civil rights law, that he will pressure Congress, Congress in passing a civil rights bill. That civil rights bill uh, in August of 1963, Congress begins to debate and to show support and to pressure con Congress in passing that civil rights law. Dr. King and 250,000 other followers of uh, SCLC and SNCC come into Washington or show up in Washington um, and show support for the civil rights law that Kennedy has promised to the American people. This is where Dr. King delivers his very famous, I have a dream speech. Uh, and you see uh, Kennedy and his staff here pressuring Congress, uh, showing support for the civil rights legislation. Um, Kennedy will not see the civil rights legislation be passed. Uh, we'll talk about tomorrow, uh, his assassination uh, that ultimately ends his life in November of 1963. However, the legacy of Kennedy and the civil rights bill will will not be forgotten because President Johnson will add notoriety to the Kennedy regime or Kennedy administration by making sure that Civil Rights Act of 1964, you need to remember this one, uh, is passed by Congress and the White House. This law, as you see Johnson signing it with Dr. King in the background there, will outlaw segregation excuse me, discrimination throughout all 50 states of the United States. Now, even though the Civil Rights Act, again, was a fight towards de jour segregation, uh, again, you're not going to stop de facto segregation. Um, if you look at these images here, um, Southern state governments still could not make any headway with with blacks because many of them would would not allow using literacy tests and poll taxes to to block citizens or black citizens from voting. In the summer of 1964, many college students uh, go into Mississippi where black voted numbers were very low uh, during the summer and lead what they call a freedom summer tour. Uh, they're going to go out and get get these blacks educated uh, to teach them how to vote, uh, what to do, and get them registered to vote. Um, this movement, again, just some images here, uh, trying to get blacks registered to vote. Um, again, you, you go into the, to the heart of segregation, to the heart of hatred. There's going to be some violence. The first three volunteers that showed up went missing. And many of the Freedom Summer leaders declared that those three volunteers were dead. Dr. King leads another march. Uh, Hollywood did a video of this uh, a couple of summers ago. Um, it is the March on Selma uh, in Selma, Alabama, to protest uh, voting discrimination. Uh, you see Dr. King and his wife there front and center lead this march through Selma, Alabama to go into the state capitol to push for voting voting rights. Um, much like in B Birmingham, these police uh, show up and you can see as they cross the bridge, 
uh, through Selma, many of them are met, uh, or this this protest is met with violence. Again, it's shown on television, the impact of the television, it now falls into the hands of President Johnson, who passes the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which will ban literacy tests throughout southern, southern states. Uh, and for the first time, black politicians ever since Reconstruction are now going to, going to be elected. Now, Dr. King and uh, his peaceful protest did a fantastic job with the Civil Rights Act of 1964, with the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and Brown versus Board of Education of fighting de jure segregation. However, towards the mid 1960s, many civil rights activists see that de facto segregation is not changing. Many blacks are still segregated. They're still being discriminated upon, even though these laws are being passed, which gives a headway to a different version of Martin Luther King. Malcolm X was the opposite of Martin Luther King Jr. He did not want to urge peaceful protest. He wanted the black man to break away from, from the white man and accept segregation, accept Jim Crow, accept and form a separate society and use violence to break away from Dr. King. In your formative today, I have a, a video for you to look at the difference um, through a debate between Dr. King and Malcolm X, as well as a document to read and answer questions from Malcolm X. Uh, Malcolm X's movement will give rise to a movement called Black Power. Uh, and black power will give rise to a black extremist, what I like to equate as the black KKK, and that being the Black Panther Party, which you'll see all in the videos today. Uh, this is going to conclude the uh, lecture notes for the civil rights movement.